okay we are live now yes okay uh, good evening everybody on behalf of mbirai and and maharashtra college of radiology uh, i invite you i invite the very special talk of dr ravi ramakantan sir as we all know dr uh, sir was a uh, ex head of the department of radiology in km hospital he has been an excellent teacher as well as a fantastic human being and apart from the radiology there is a lot of things that we need to learn from him as far as the practice of radiology being a good radiologist being a good doctor and more importantly a being no sir what sir has in store for us but it will be a treat i can assure you that everybody will benefit out of it especially the young students who are going to start their practice and they should learn and understand what they are expected in their lives as a radiologist as well as it will be a reaffirmation of the teachings that for all the consultant who have been trained by sir and who have been in his contact so i will request sir to take over from here on and start his lecture over to you sir okay uh, good evening let's start uh, with this slide uh, for some of you this may be uh, familiar this may have been there for two months two years 20 years uh, from today in the past this is a mini convocation ceremony for uh, students who are passing out into the mbbs fold after a lot of hard work through eighth standard through entrance exams uh, they get into a medical college work really hard and look forward to this day when they will uh, take the hippocratic oath in the audience you can see proud parents and there are some few uh, grandparents also and this is what you get into well before you become a radiologist you become a doctor on this day you read out the hippocratic oath actually that is a tradition at the gs medical college uh, some 5 6 years back i had this great privilege of reading out the hippocratic oath to all these young doctors and they with one candle in one hand they would tell after me read the hippocratic oath The Hippocratic Oath is uh, not the original one that we uh, used to have a hundred years back, but it's modified as per the needs of the day. These students say many many things in the Hippocratic Oath, but it all comes down to just one thing. Again and again, they keep saying, "I will be a good doctor. I will take care of my patients, and I will do no harm." so you started your career as a doctor mbbs doctor as i said whenever it was and then one day you decided to do radiology now i want you to all to close your eyes and think back to the time when you decided to become a radiologist and find an honest answer for yourself why you became a radiologist and after you think this over you know sometimes closing your eyes and thinking back on the past puts everything in perspective till that time you have done something you have been something and today when i will tell you why i became a radiologist that whole environment of uh, what 1978 comes back to me on why i became a radiologist for those of you who are young getting to be a radiologist has been a nightmare it has been a war war zone you gone through the neat battlefield and been the top of the top i guess i keep saying top of the top and became a radiologist now really close your eyes and think for yourself why you did all that manjan to become a radiologist i'll give you 15 seconds i'll shut my mouth up
So some of you, please open your eyes. Some of you really did what I said. Some of you or many of you may have not. Uh, it's not fair for me to not tell you my own story of how and why I became a radiologist. Because there's a deep story in that. Uh, it's been inspiring for myself and I keep telling this story generation after generation so that people know what life is all about once you become a radiologist, once you become a doctor. In my time, unlike today, exactly the opposite of today, people did radiology when they couldn't do anything else. You understand? Nobody wanted to do radiology. Simple plain x-rays, no ultrasound, no CT, no MR, just x-rays, the so-called conventional radiology. So I had failed in my third MBBS exam. I failed in medicine. As a result of which, I lost a lot of marks uh, in the final tally. And though I wanted to do surgery, I wanted to do orthopedic surgery, uh, the selection process is completely different. It's only from the hospital, your own hospital. I could not get orthopedic surgery. I could not get uh, neurosurgery. I could not get, uh, what is the other one I wanted? Cardiovascular surgery. So it was an MCH course. I didn't want to do general surgery. I could not do any of those because I had low marks. One afternoon, one evening, I decided enough of all this medicine stuff. I will go and do health physics at the Baba Atomic Research Center. At that time, my friend met a friend of mine who was an orthopedic surgeon. And he said, and I quote, I cannot forget this, Ravi, radiology cur, full time pass. Ready? Do radiology, it is full time pass. I don't know what hit me. I decided to do radiology. So I did radiology not because I wanted to, but because I had to. In spite of that, once in the department, there were inspiring people ahead of me. My registrar, Dr. Pramod Farke, who is in Australia now, was the greatest inspiration. My teachers, uh, I mean, I cannot tell enough about them of how they gently pushed us along to do the right things without being disciplinarians. Now, all this happened and I grew in the department more and more senior. I spent all of, all of my working life in KM Hospital. And a few years back, a few of our senior faculty from other departments were sitting at the Just Look Hospital and talking about medical humanities. By that time, I had become gray in medical humanities since 2002. I've been writing small essays on Chairman's Corner. If you're interested, Google Chairman's Corner. My, my stories are on the first line there. And I had been, I don't know why or how it happened, but I had become extremely sensitive to human suffering. When you spend 40 years in KM Hospital, you come to realize one very important thing. The only thing that is worse than poverty or ill health is poverty and ill health. We see it all the time on the corridors of our hospital. We sort of get used to it. So one such time when he had this medical humanities meeting, uh, one of the participants in the six of us that were there was Dr. Rajan Badwe, who is now the director of the Tata Memorial Hospital. He's some three, four years junior to me, uh, but an extremely articulate person, a sensitive soul, uh, a great breast surgeon. And he's one of those guys who tells every patient, I have all the time in the world for you. Ask me questions if you have. It doesn't matter if it's a free patient or a paid patient at the Tata Hospital. So he himself was an extremely sensitive, he is rather a sensitive human being, a sensitive doctor. So he told me, uh, told all of us a story which was so inspiring. And I think uh that I went and traced those radiology files from the Tata Hospital, and this is what we have. So this is a young girl who had a rather acutely progressive uh, large swelling in the frontal region. We did a CT scan. The history is extremely characteristic. Painful swelling, rapidly increasing size, symptoms like infection, and you do a skull x-ray, and used to do skull x-rays there. And here is a big osteolytic area out there in the frontal bone. Of course, we did a CT scan. This is what we see. What is your reaction? At least my reaction every single time is a guarded say nothing. So I looked at it and I said, okay, 
you have sundry type of periosteal reaction. There is an enhancing lesion inside and outside the brain from a membrane bone in a 15 year old who has history of like osteomyelitis. This has got to be Ewing sarcoma. And then Dr. Barwe told us the story of how all this happened and why he is telling us that story. And it goes something like this. And it was so inspiring. And I wrote a poem on that. And please read this poem with me. I'll read the line for myself. You read the lines for yourself. And it has to be very, very inspirational for a gada like me to write a poem. Now, before that, it's so important. We do this all the time. We look at images all the time and we say, wow, beautiful images. Wow, interesting case. We should present it. We should publish it. But how often do we think of the patient behind the image? And that is the thrust of my um, Bhashan today, that it's all what we need to do is to put the whole thing in perspective in, in terms of patient uh, suffering. There's always suffering uh, whenever a patient is ill, whether you have a flu or a cold or a headache, you are suffering. Imagine a patient like this, uh, who is uh, a bad disease, who has no resources, has been sent from the Tata KM hospital to Tata hospital, crowds and crowds of patients will have to have chemotherapy, radiotherapy, so on and so forth. We seldom think of the patient. We as radiologists look at images and sometimes we say, why should we bother about patients? that those clinicians will take care of. Okay. There can be nothing more uh, stupid than that. So we do not think of patients behind the image. And then there is this story I was saying, uh, Dr. Rajan Badwe told us, all of us, and it was so inspiring that I wrote it up into a poem. Please read this with me. And the title I had given this poem was a well-known short form. I call this also known as. It sort of encompasses of what this poem is all about and what that episode uh, to Dr. Rajan Badwe was. And I do not know how many of you made sense of this. And um, this is one of the poems I showed at the Radiology Education Foundation conference or teaching sessions. And of the, what, 200 or 10 people out there, uh, two or three actually got for this poem meant. I mean, it's not blaming somebody, but it's being, being sensitive to what bed 13 is and who Arti is. Now, uh, I'll, in my life, I've written three poems, right? This is one of them. So it's not as if I write poems for a living or for that matter for anything at all, but there is a sense of satisfaction in putting words into poetry and the story itself is extremely inspiring. And so it happened that I, I, I had gone to see the patient uh, and the radiology and this is what you'll see. We sometimes don't ever think of the patient and you'll often ask, why should we think of the patient? We are radiologists. And somebody tells me then that radiology is a non-clinical specialty. My head bristles. I said, do you know the meaning of clinical and non-clinical? Clinical means anything to do with patients. Non-clinical is what the pathologists do. Something that to do with the secretions of the human body is nothing to do with the patient at all. And I keep telling them that we don't do x-rays on elephants. We don't do CT scans on donkeys, and we don't do interventional work on pigs. We as radiologists work with human beings. 
as a radiologist yourself, you may not see patients who come for general radiology, but you'll interact with them for procedures in even in general radiology. And of course, and in CT scans and MR scans, the patient are walking, talking in front of you. Interventional radiology is all about patients. And I really envy ultrasonologists. They have the patient in front of them, talking to them all the time, asking questions and sometimes crying when you say that the fetal heart is not seen. How do you handle these things? Put yourself in the position of a patient on an ultrasound table and the ultrasonologist tells you that your fetus or your child is dead. How do you tell that? How do you look at the patient in the eye and do that? How do you look at a patient in the eye and say that you have what looks like a carcinoma of the breast or a uterine carcinoma? It's not easy. Some of you seen an ultrasonologist can understand what I'm talking about. For the youngsters, I want you to think about this. We are not trained how to handle these situations when the patient is crying. We are not even told whether we are supposed to tell these things to the patient. How do we handle these situations? So anybody who tells us that radiology is a non-clinical specialty is an idiot who doesn't know the meaning of what clinical really means. So this was Arti and, and her story was extremely inspiring to put everything in perspective. And Dr. Rajan said, even though I'm such a sensitive doctor, I don't remember patients by their name, but by their disease. So they become somebody as Ewing sarcoma, they become bed number 15 or 25, whatever happens. To be sure there are exceptions. I mean, as you grow older, you start remembering patients by their name, right? It, you sort of realize how important it is to remember patients by their names. So that's what the patient wants. Patient doesn't want to be known as bed 13. Besides in teaching hospital, one day they are bed 15, next day they are whatever, whatever. Third day they are transferred out of the hospital. So it's a good idea to know patients not only by their bed number, not only by their diseases, even by their names. One way of looking all of this in proper perspective is to put yourself in the position of the patient and realize, I, I keep saying this, I have these aphorisms, I keep telling these but you look, our residents, that you go to a movie theater because you want to go to a movie theater. Patients come to hospital not because they want to, because they are sick, in pain and anxious. And sometimes it happens, right? that you are doing something on the console in the CT scan room or wherever, wherever, and the patient or the relative says that, I want to meet the doctor. Does it not often happen that tell the patient to wait outside, I will give the report. The technician tells you, but the patient wants to see, I have no time. I have got 50 scans to report. And if you were a patient and you got a report in front of you, and you want to know what it really means. What would you do if a doctor says, I cannot see you? And radiologists had this extremely irritating habit. A report hai, aap leke jau, aapke doctor se baat ko. And hell has broken loose often when you say that. And I know all the excuses. In our hospital, we are not supposed to talk to patients. We have been told, don't talk to patients. If somebody says that, I say, don't refer patients to me. If a patient comes to me, I will explain the radiological findings to him. And what do you do then? You tell the patient, these are the findings on the radiology. And the patient will ask you invariably, doctor, what should be done? And quote, unquote, this is what I say. I am an expert in radiology. I can tell you what the images tell you. I am not an expert in orthopedic surgery. I am not a neonatologist. I'm not qualified to tell you what is to be done. Please go back to your doctor and follow his advice. One, I also add, I might tell you something. Your doctor may tell you something else and you'll be confused. So please don't ask me what is to be done. Nobody can have objection to that. The trouble is when you start telling the patient, Aisa karne ka, Aisa karne ka. I never cross ref. Patients will often ask me, si doctor ko dekhne ka? I said, no, go down, see the notice board, choose your doctor. So these are uh, limits or borderland of ethics in medical practice. You don't get involved in the management of the patient. Don't ever criticize another doctor in front of you. Don't ever criticize another radiologist. They said, but tubes normal. Said, maybe that's what he felt. 
but I feel that the fallopian tubes are abnormal. There are ways of doing that. So, so when a patient is, uh, when I'm doing something and I keep telling our residents, I keep telling our ward boys only one thing. In our department, patients first. Nothing else matters. Not the CEO, not anybody, not the dean. Patients first. Attend to patients first, no matter how irritating they are, because they are anxious. And as radiologists, we cannot shed that responsibility. In KM Hospital, when I, when, I, when I was there for a long, long time, it was a habit with the residents to say, patients go bar kada group. I said, what the hell for? Why? No, sir, patients start coughing, and then if they have cocks, we will get cocks. I said, why do you become a doctor then? You should not become a doctor. Go and become a BMC clerk or become the municipal commissioner. If you are a doctor, you have to look at patients whenever it's required. So this is important, that the patients do not come in the way of her work. So next time a patient comes and asks you, sir, doctor, what is to be done? You would say, I can't tell you. You say, I can tell you what is there in the report. And I have done extensive surveys on that. Most doctors have no objection to you explaining the radiological findings. Nobody can object. It has been ruled in multiple cases that the radiologist can discuss radiological findings with the patient. In fact, we can do it better than anybody else. So this is something that you have to be remembering all the time. The first thing that you want to do is to respect the patient's right to talk to you, which brings up a bigger issue. Now, sometimes you do procedures on patients and we don't even bother to tell the patient what needs to be done. The patient may want to know what is to be done. So take time out to explain to him or her, for example, a hysterosalpingogram or a mammogram. The patient, don't tell me where is the time. Then you don't do anything. Sit at home. Find time for this. If you are in a teaching hospital, you've got 100 people to talk to, help you out. If you are in private practice and a patient wants to talk to you about the procedure, you have to do it. Put yourself in the position of the patient and you realize that it's essential. And after the procedure is over, the patient will ask you what was found. Now, if you don't want to answer that question immediately because you want to look at the images carefully, tell the truth. I cannot tell you now because I have to look at the images carefully, right? And I'll send the report tomorrow. After the report is ready, please come and talk to me if you want. So you don't have to commit immediately what is right and what is wrong. And this is one good way to give you time to decide what you want to tell the patient. So all of this is only one thing, that patients are our work. They do not come in the way of our work. So this is a beautiful book, uh, not widely available. You can get it from Amazon. It's not an easy book to read, but it's a, a heart rendering book where it talks of various illnesses uh, suffered by doctors as they become patients. And there's one particular paragraph there by a leading psychiatrist in the US who said all of this. So he said, I've been treating patients with depression for 25, 30 years till I got depressed. I had no idea what depression was about. So this is something that uh, you can do. And that's probably empath empathetic, not sympathy. When you identify yourself with the patient and put yourself in that position, as you dictate a report, as you wait for the patient to finish his questions, as you counsel the patient as to what, to, what is to be done uh, in terms of uh, follow-up in, in, in radiology, right? Even that you can be careful. I normally do this, but you follow the advice of your reference, your, doc, your own doctor, because different doctors have different way of doing this. This is a beautiful line and is a truth. Different doctors have different ways of doing that. Please go back to your doctor and follow his or her advice. So this is when doctors become uh, patients. And you don't have to become a patient to understand what it is to be uh, a patient. For example, those of you who have undergone a contrast CT or a contrast MR realize that it is not a non-invasive procedure. Even an IV line is painful. Contrast injection gives you funny sensations. And then there is whole anxiety of what the report would be. One time long back, I was getting a CT scan done for headaches. Yeah. And during the course of my, oh, this was 30 years back, right? During the course of this uh, MR scan, yeah, MR scan, a doctor at that hospital came and told me, sir, don't worry, there is nothing. 
there's nothing more soothing than that hearing that during the course of the MR. So if I can feel that way, many patients will feel that way. I'm not saying that halfway through this procedure, you go and tell the patient the report, right? But the first opportunity that you can tell, and if the patient asks, please convey the truth to him. Otherwise, if you're going to see bad news, take the patient into a room, sit down and talk. It's possible, even if you are in a busy teaching hospital, there has to be will to want to do this because this happens once or twice. So this is about being a patient. And I keep saying this, that once you put yourself in the position of the patient, you realize that the question they have, the anxiety they express is not bejafra. It's not a pain in the backside. It is the truth that the patient is experiencing. And this is William Shakespeare. For those of you who want to read and who are inclined literature wise, you can read this and, and it's about this that you feel what the patient feels. Now, uh, this word empathy is something that you have to understand. It's not that you, you become a patient, you get involved, then we can't function. How can you be so sympathetic? It's not sympathy, it's empathy. We have mirror neurons. Please Google and read about mirror neurons. Mirror neurons is what makes humans humans. Yeah. Uh, if you have nothing else to do, even if you have something to do, Please read about neural neurons which started developing in the great apes and human beings, God human beings, are human beings because of neural neurons and sociology and culture develop because human beings have mirror neurons. And the important thing is that I, I cannot teach you this in a lecture. Though I'm talking to you in a lecture, I'm sort of sensitizing you to think of these things which you probably never ever think about, right? You are interested in those images and what is to be done, you're interested in the business of radiology, you're interested in teaching, you're interested in exam, whatever, but it's rarely that we have uh, time to think of the patient. Now, I cannot teach you, as I said, I can only sensitize you. If you are a resident, if you are a student, you need role models, people who live and breathe the practice of radiology, like I'm saying it should be. And that is difficult to find. Unfortunately, in our teaching hospitals, we have very few people who will inculcate by example. They lead by example. What do I mean? They don't teach like I'm preaching, right? They do this every day and every day out. And I keep saying that residents and students completely copy even the way their teachers are walking, right? So you can tell, looking at the resident, who is the chief. So if you are a teacher anywhere here and you're listening to me, uh, and if you feel that what I do makes sense, be a role model. What we desperately leak, uh, lack in teaching hospital there are role models. We were lucky. We had big, big role models. Giants in all the subjects that we were in medicine, in surgery, in orthopedics. And of course, when I came to radiology, we had great people who, who led by example, and I was extremely lucky to be one of them. And uh, so this brings up to what it's all about. You know, we have technology today to look at the brain in real time. We can do it, we can map it, we can do what it takes to show where the important uh, centers are for a patient who is, for example, undergoing epilepsy surgery or, or surgery for, let's say, a benign tumor of the brain. We have the technology to do that. When we ogle at that and say, wow, beautiful pictures. But what we lack is this. We do not have the courage to look at the patient in the eye or the mother in the eye and say that this is what the patient's problem is. I'm not saying you should do it every single time. But if you are asked, you have to in inculcate in yourself the habit of talking to patients because all that we do is about patients. If there are no patients, there are no radiologists, there are no doctors. So our life is all about patients. I'll give you some examples here of how this happens. So we have this young lady from uh, out of town. This is from KM Hospital. So she had these images, this failure gradually progressing and she was extremely distressed. And we diagnosed this, of course, as achalasia cardia. So those are the he days, he days of, of interventional radiology at KM. Even now, 
what do you mean even now even now it it's a premier department of interventional radiology so we we told the patient then it is a matter of routine no we will dilate the esophagus with the balloon dilator etc etc and we used to talk to patients even then and when we said to this patient that you will have to get admitted one day we will do the procedure will keep you for one day and then next day you can go home this was the patient's reaction these were times when there was a documentary being done at the km hospital on the km hospital and this is a clip from that movie so the cameraman or camera woman a little girl uh who is a dear friend very nice girl was looking at these images and she started crying camera people don't cry why was this patient crying so they're trying to find out why are you crying na kya ho gaya you know you won't believe what she said she says one day i don't go to work my malik will take me out from the job i will lose my job as an interventional radiologist you have access to patient as a diagnostic radiologist you still have access to patient you are doing a ct scan on a head injured boy at 3 am in the morning and the mother is waiting outside you see complete arrest of blood flow and you know that it is brain death and the mother is asking you what did you find on the ct scan and you tell the mother go talk to your doctor and the mother raises hell it happened at the kokila bin hospital the poor resident simply said go and talk to your doctor and she said you are the doctor in charge of x-rays why don't you tell me what is wrong with my boy and she is completely justified she is not going to wait in an unconscious child with a motorcycle motor vehicle accident who is unconscious that you go and meet the doctor so you have to be trained to be able to talk to patients right as i said this is not classroom teaching you have to have role models who will walk this through with you who will talk to the patient and tell you without teaching how this is to be practiced so we desperately need such great role models who will lead this young generation in these days of artificial intelligence i keep saying that if we don't become human beings ai sooner or later will take over much of the work that radiology is do you read literature on ai people will keep saying again and again that our role as radiologists will change we will not be diagnosing subdural clots we will have to be talking to patients relatives this is one more example okay uh, this is embolization of a large whatever it is okay uh if you show this in an interventional neuroradiology meeting people say what a great job of embolization every single branch small branch is embolized and you can't get a better picture than this these are images that we show in our conferences close your eyes when was the last time in any radiology conference even if it is interventional radiology that you saw a picture of a human being how many of you on your cell phones have a picture of a patient even one picture of a patient you can always ask why i'm trying to tell you why that you have a 100000 images of various pathologies of the brain or whatever but you don't have a single picture of a patient and that sort of puts the whole thing in perspective you cannot be obsessed with images and you would say where do i see patient what they are all around you patients are all around you in your reception in your waiting rooms along the corridors of the hospital in your department you simply have to look and see and you will see the human suffering that this girl has got the people say a picture is worth a thousand words this is what we see most often in conferences this is what we can see but we don't look for it. and there can be no greater tragedy than not looking at the patient who has the disease and just being obsessed with the disease that the patient had this is not what i am saying this is 200 years back my all time great favorite uh, teacher of modern medicine william osler look him up on the internet he was the one i told you this in the past 
who said that medicine should be taught by the bedside. Can you imagine before him, medicine was taught only in the classroom. So he was a revolutionary and he's called the father of modern medicine. In different ways, all through his life, he has said this. Don't look just at the disease, but also look at the patient. And oftentimes, it's true because one of the things that he has said is listen to the patient. He is telling you the diagnosis. And I told you this last time that when you're stuck with a radiological diagnosis, talk to the patient, listen to the history, you will often get a solution to a difficult radiological problem. It's possible, it is true, it has happened to me several scores of times. And I do talk to the patient very, very frequently. So we have this lady who is an epitome of human suffering. What I'm trying to say here is that we practice a pattern of radiology and we will have the courage to wipe her tears away. We talk of interesting cases. We will present this in this meeting. We will present in that meeting. We will publish this. We will make a case series. We all the time are talking of interesting cases. Close your eyes. Be true to yourself. How many times have you thought that each interesting cases is an unfortunate patient. Please open your eyes. The moment we change our attitude from interesting cases to unfortunate patients, we are taking the first step about clinical radiology, about being sensitive to be a patient in the minds of a radiologist who's practicing. That's all that I ask. Put yourself in the position of a patient and everything else will fall in place. This is a console that I work with and I sit in front of bright monitors in a darkened room. But luckily for me, the way I have been trained, I'm extremely conscious of the human suffering around me. These are pictures from the corridor of our hospital where you can identify the patient. I got permission from the patient each of these patients has a story to tell. The lady sitting on the left, I'll give you just one example of human suffering. She's sitting there outside the MR console. She's a patient with a tuberculous spine who has been operated. So I saw this moving side at eight in the morning and I thought she needed help. So I said, Aapko kuch kya? you know what she said? Abhi to sab kuch ho gaya. And her position and the posture tells you how desperate she is. And we cannot make her wait for an MR scan. I mean, her mother or her son had gone to pay the fees for the MR, but she's completely distraught. I mean, there are many, many stories with each of this. This is a child at the bottom right with the neurofibromatosis. Nobody looked at the back and they are, they are planning. I mean, we sent a whole lot of radiology for me. And when I thought it could be NF, I asked the patient boy to lift up his shirt and there you are, cafe or lace spot. Being a radiologist does not mean that you cannot look at patients and you cannot use your MBBS knowledge. So this brings up to my last slide. We thought radiology was about images. What I'm trying to tell you is radiology is about patients, not just images. Ponder what I said, if you will, and write to me if you change your practice and if you've got thoughts on how radiology can be about patients and not just about images. Thank you. I'm done. Sameer. Sameer, uh, I'm done. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. I'm already on the line, sir. Yeah. Uh, so this is what we wanted to listen. I think each and every resident, the consultant should listen to you for this specific thing that we are treating the patient, a human being, not the images. And I'm very, very fortunate that I work with you and I have tried to inculcate some of the virtues that you have been teaching 
of course you know me that you have always been telling them i am an idiot <laughs> i don't learn <laughs> i think but that you do for all the people so i am not the only person <laughs> that you tell but whatever it is sir this was an exceptional talk i think lot many things are to be learned and i hope that everybody will somehow put all these thoughts into their practice thank you very much sir thank you so thank much thank you bye i'm going offline bye bye yes yeah, sir sir can i uh, i think yeah fine definitely sir we'll just see if we can have another lecture of yours next week and uh, we'll uh, put it on the media thank you very much sir. Yeah, thank you thank you very much everybody i hope that you people must have learned a lot from sir's lecture and please give us the feedback at msbira@gmail.com thank you very much have a good day kitne din the